Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be looking at a ring, a very special ring that uh, that is relatively sought after and uh, it is also, you know, one of those rings that uh, that people just have got to have. I got to have it. Um, and that is Ravenfrost. So Ravenfrost um, is known for one effect, really is the main effect that people look at it for, and that is the fact that it has cannot be frozen. And we will talk about cannot be frozen. Um, but before we talk about cannot be frozen, let's talk about the rest of the ring, shall we? So Ravenfrost is a uh, level 45 ring, so it's relatively low. Um, usually you can uh, equip this sometime in the middle of uh, Nightmare difficulty, uh, which is not bad at all. Uh, we also have a huge bonus to attack rating, which does vary by also a huge amount of 100, which is 150 to 250 attack rating. Um, 250 attack rating is more attack rating than you will see on most rings that, uh, that drop. Most rare rings will have nowhere near 250. Uh, we also have a 15 to 45 cold damage, which is important um, if you are looking to keep your corpses, uh, because this can be a detriment um, the additional cold damage will have a chance to shatter corpses. So uh, if you were like, maybe you're a horking barbarian um, and you didn't necessarily want to uh, to kill your corpses, you might want to think about using a different form of cannot be frozen. Uh, we also have plus 20 to dexterity, uh, which does vary from 15 to 20. Um, so this is a kind of a, a variance here and... Um, uh, we're looking at a pretty heavy variance on the attack rating, basically, because we have 150 to 200 on the attack rating, 250 on the attack rating, and then we have uh, 15 to 20 on the dexterity. And when you put on this ring, you will notice a huge difference in the amount of attack rating that you can put out uh, just simply because of the not only the dexterity, um, but the attack rating itself, the raw number. Um, and then on top of that, the dexterity will also give you a boost to your block percentage as well, so keep that in mind. And... Um, and a small bonus to your defense. Uh, we also have plus 40 to mana, which is static. It's uh, the first thing on this thing that it has been static. Um, and we have a cold absorption of 20%. Now, cold absorption is amazing because what cold absorption does is it actually uh, takes any cold damage that comes in and, uh, and essentially heals you for the same amount, um, which is uh, which is absolutely great. So uh, so think about it like this. Um, let's say you have an attack coming in, um, and uh, it is 1,000 cold damage, right? So your resistances apply, 75% resistances, uh, which reduces it by 950. Uh, and um, so, sorry. So it's a... So, 975 percent uh, to 250, and uh, and then we apply our 20% absorption. So uh, so we go minus 20%, uh, which is 50, um, and we take 200 damage. So we will actually take 200 damage, uh, but then it will heal us for 50. So we have to add 50 to our hit points, uh, which is effectively subtracting it from the 200. So we are left with only 150 left, which is pretty darn sweet. Um, cold absorption percentage works differently than cold absorb non-percentage. So keep that in mind as well. Um, and then we come to the meat and potatoes, which is the cannot be frozen effect. Now, cannot be frozen is imperative for melee characters. If you are a melee character, I recommend uh, you have cannot be frozen because you will be in dire straits if you do not. Um, cannot be frozen will essentially prevent you from uh, being hit by any kind of chill effect, which will otherwise cause you to slow down. Um, now, there is some exceptions to this rule. Um, there is an effect in the game, and it is known as slows target buy. Slows target buy is an effect which sh is shared on many different items. Um, as you can see, Astreon's Iron Ward has th a 25% slows target buy on it. Slows target is not considered a cold effect. Um, and because it is not considered a cold effect, it does not actually become affected by cannot be frozen. And there is one ability in specifically that is um, 
have notorious for causing people to scream at their screens, saying something along the lines of, What I'm wearing cannot be frozen. Why am I frozen? You know, and, uh, and silly things like that. Um, well, Holy Freeze uses the slows target by effect, not the cold effect. And the slows target by effect is not considered a cold effect. Um, even though, when you are under the effect of Holy Freeze, when this is the silly part, um, it is turns you blue. Um, so if I were to take uh, this particular character, for instance, and uh, and go to a zone, uh, let's go somewhere a little bit uh, less harsh. So because he's he's not uh, he's not properly geared anyway. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, and walk around, and you will notice that uh, that as I walk around with Holy Freeze, uh, the monsters become frozen near me, and they slow down as they move around me. Um, this particular effect is unfortunately not counterable. Um, the slows target by effect is shared by a large number of items within the game um, and abilities. Um, and so, you know, keep in mind that uh, that cannot be frozen will not protect you from holy freeze. Um, it will not protect you from slows target by. It will not protect you from decrepify. It will not protect you from uh, from the clay golem. Um, and uh, and there are a myriad of items which have this cannot be frozen effect. Um, this, this slows target by effect that cannot be frozen does not work versus. Um, but keep in mind that there are, in Hell difficulty, there are literally thousands upon thousands of monsters that have cold damaging effects. And every single one of these cold damaging effects can apply a chill to you or try to freeze you. And um, you don't want that to happen. Um, you definitely, definitely, definitely don't want that to happen. So, you know, having Cannot Be Frozen is going to prevent all of those chill effects, which is really what you're looking for. Um, you can also try to combat the chill effects by using a half-freeze duration and things like that. Um, but, um, but Cannot Be Frozen is going to be a superior choice. Now, uh, Ravenfrost is uh, relatively sought after because of multiple things going on here. Uh, we've got the cannot be frozen, which is absolutely great, but we also have the cold absorption. We have the um, the bonus to attack rating, the bonus to dexterity, which also helps out your block chance, and uh, and even the forty to mana is actually pretty darn sweet on this ring. Um, and uh, you can actually pair this ring up with another fellow ring for um, having multiple forms of um, of absorption. So uh, let's say, for instance, I wanted to have cold, and I also wanted to have fire absorption. Uh, one of the rings that I could use is Dwarf Star. So here we have a Dwarf Star, which also has fire absorption. So if I were to wear the Raven Frost and the Dwarf Star in concert, I could get both forms of absorption and uh, make myself relatively immune to both cold and fire, providing I have a decent amount of resistances. And, um, and you can even go one step further, and uh, you can use something like a Wisp protect Projector. Uh, Wisp Projector is uh, also lightning absorption, um, and then you could get your fire absorption in another way. Um, there is a particular pair of gloves that has fire absorption, which uh, I, for some reason, do not have on me at this particular moment, but they're called Hellmouth War Gauntlets. And uh, if you were to run the Raven Frost, the Dwarf Star, and the Hellmouth War Gauntlets together, you would have fire, lightning, and cold absorption all together. Um, you could also, theoretically, instead of using the Whisper Projector, um, you could utilize the uh, Black thorn's face uh, black thorn's face also has lightning absorption on it and it is very nice um, i use that a lot to, to uh, protect myself versus gloams um, so as you can see raven frost is a relatively useful ring very very useful and if you find one you're going to be super excited um, it does have some rather bad rolls unfortunately uh, you can find one with you know like 150 attack rating and only 15 dexterity um, but even a bad raven frost is still better than no raven frost if you do not have cannot be frozen um, there are other cannot be frozen items in this game that you can get and you can also simply sock it like a helmet or armor with a cham rune so uh, also keep that in mind and um, let's talk about where you can find this particular item. So uh, we're going to take a look at Raven's Frost. And, uh, and we're going to look and see, uh, assuming that we have maybe about 150 magic find, um, let's see where our probability lies. So uh, it looks like Hell Andariel has a 1 in 333 chance to drop a, uh, a Raven Frost. Uh, we also have... Um, I'm trying to look at the non-quest uh, monsters. 
because uh, the quest monsters are only one-time things. Uh, looks like Diablo and Nightmare is 1 in 865 chance. Uh, we have Mephisto and Nightmare is 1 in 872 chance. Uh, we also have Andariel... Where's uh, Andariel and Nightmare? It doesn't look like Andariel and Nightmare drops this. Um, I'm not seeing Nightmare and Andariel on the list, which I thought uh, I could have sworn that she was one of the ones that dropped it. And uh, She is not on the list. Uh, let's take a look at Super Uniques, and uh, we'll see what Super Uniques can drop this item as well. So, uh, Neelithak in uh, normal difficulty. Oh, really? It's saying Neelithak in normal difficulty has a chance to drop this ring. That's crazy. Um, Summoner in hell difficulty. That could be a typo. Uh, Neelithak in nightmare difficulty. Uh, Neelithak in hell difficulty. Radiment in hell uh, Countess in Hell, uh, Hephaesto in Nightmare, and Hephaesto in Hell, the Cow King in Nightmare, um, so forth and so on. It just gets worse from there, unfortunately. Um, Shank the Overseer in Nightmare, though, has a chance to drop this. Uh, it's kind of a poor chance, but um, because Shank is so easy to get to and so quick to kill, uh, that might be a good choice. Uh, Pindle Skin in Nightmare also has about the same chance as Shank. So you could run Pindle, you could run Shank real quick, um, and you can also run Eldritch the Rectifier. Uh, they all have about an 8,226, 1 in 8,226 chance. It's all about the same. And um, if you were running Eldritch, Shank, and uh, Pindle, uh, that would be a nice little combination. You could just do those three really quickly. And then maybe you could teleport down and kill Hephaesto as well, because he has a pretty good chance. Um, that's not bad. That's, uh, that's actually not bad at all. And, uh, and these are all Nightmare versions, by the way. It's saying that Nightmare Eldritch, Nightmare Shank, and Nightmare Hephaesto all have a better chance than um, than the Hell versions. Even Pindleskin, for some reason, is uh, a little bit higher in the Nightmare version um, than he is in the Hell version for this particular ring. It must have to do uh, specifically with um, all the other rings that um, that can drop from these particular monsters. And, uh, and that's just kind of how it works sometimes. So the, um, the Hell versions will sometimes have a lower drop chance um, than the Nightmare versions because their loot tables are larger and they have more stuff that they can potentially drop. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. I might have to go farm Nightmare, Eldritch, Shank, and Pindle uh, a whole bunch of times, which I'm sure I can do exceedingly fast on my, uh, on my Magic Find character. Um, so I can get a couple random frosts. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. And uh, keep watching.